So, all right. First off, On One Photo Raw is a powerful photo manager. At its heart, it's a lightning fast photo browser that lets you view your work instantly without having to import or catalog anything. Simply point it to where your photos and videos live on your computer's hard drive, external drive, file server, uh, camera, or even to cloud storage, doesn't matter. Uh, basically point it to that location. If it's connected, Photo Raw will find it. Um, so over here, you can see there's the folders pane. I can navigate quickly to anything on my machine. Um, if I have a memory card connected, I can navigate there. Obviously, you wouldn't want to edit directly off the card, but if you have a, a connected external hard drive like I do, you can find that easily. You can get to your cloud storages easily. And also in our browser, we have albums, filters, tethered shooting. Um, so let me just go ahead and dive right into one of my folders here so that I can take you through some of the different view modes. Um, so grid view, as you any of you Lightroom users may know, this is a very handy way to view and rate my photos. I prefer the film strip view myself and you can change that down here on the bottom left or just hitting the uh, F key will pull up the film strip also for you. But one of the great things about Photo Raw is it allows you to call, it allows you to organize your photos very quickly. As you can see here, I have my star ratings, some color tags, and you won't be able to see me doing this, but if you watch these star ratings, I can actually change them just by hitting my keyboard. So I can change things that I want to be a five, a five. Uh, you know, maybe if it's a photo I don't really like, I can make it a two. Uh, but there's, I mean, this is very easy. These are files that I can quickly view. Uh, you can't see right now, but I'm just holding my finger down on my keyboard and I'm just browsing through this entire folder, there, folder here until I find something that I'm looking for. Um, and yeah, I can keep rating them. I can keep organizing these photos how I want to. You can see that the star ratings are changing just as I'm hitting my keyboard. Even by hitting my keyboard, I can add you know, the color tag there too to organize it a little more in depth. And the reason that I like to do this myself is I can go back into my folder afterward and set up a filter to find only my four star and higher images or only my five star images or maybe it's only my five star images that are um, with this blue tag you know if you set that for a certain location that's very easy for you to navigate find to organize and just to manage your photos a lot better um, also further to that there's different view modes so a lot of you uh, portrait photographers out there I know sometimes can end up uh, looking at two of the same or three of the same photos, trying to find, uh, you know, one that that's the best one to use for your client. So we have our compare mode here, actually, that I use quite a bit. So I will just choose a few photos. I'm just still in our browser right here. I'm going to shift and click a few photos. I'll do five here. And down here, I have our compare view. So choosing that compare view will pull up all those photos that I've selected and I can zoom in on these photos and pan them, um, you know, find out which one of these, these photos my model's face is how I want it. Uh, further to that, I can hit the slash key to get rid of photos that I know I'm not going to use. Um, so, you know, when you do narrow it down to a couple that you like, or maybe if you do get to that final one using this compare mode, you can easily just give it a five star rating, um, you know, choose the P key on your keyboard to add the heart, like a pick similar to Lightroom, um, just hit a P. So these are my two that I'm gonna keep. You know, maybe I decide I don't wanna keep that. Uh, I'll just go ahead and hit the slash key and here I am on my final one there. Um, so that's, that's kind of the basics of the browse, but there's more in depth stuff that you can go through as well. Um, hitting the G key in browse will get you right back to your grid view. Um, but one of the features I use quite a bit actually is this, um, this filters panel to search through all of my photos. You know, so if I'm looking uh, to show, show some of my friends or maybe a client some of my photos that I've taken on the Oregon coast, for example, let me go ahead and click this. I can type in here, Oregon coast, and this will pull up all of my Oregon coast photos. Um, so this is going to search off the title. It's going to search off of this metadata um, all pulled in over here. And I can even refine that further. So I mean, my camera is going to know what time this was shot. I can go in and add another filter and find 
Um, let's say I want to find all of the photos that I shot in the morning at the Oregon coast. I can set time of day here in the filters pane and let's go to morning. And this will just pull up all my photos that I took in the morning on the Oregon coast. Uh, so it's a very easy way to find, you know, what you're, what you were shooting. And if you've organized things as you pull them in, it's a very handy and easy way to get to all your different photos. Um, further to that, we also have our albums area and you can create your own albums um, that basically pull in photos that do different or that have different parameters that you have set. As you can see here, I have my album that's five stars. These are all my images that I've added a five star to uh, throughout all of my machine. Everything that's connected right now, if it has a five star, it's going to appear in this albums pane right here under five stars. Um, so I can keep looking too. I have ocean. I can set this up even further uh, by you know time of day, like I just set here in the filters. You have complete flexibility with this album. It's just like you do the filters area. We also have tethered shooting. Um, so any of you studio shooters out there, we have tethered shooting that'll bring your photos right to your machine. Um, I'm not going to spend any time on that today here, uh, but this is the browse module. It's very easy for me to get to my photos again to navigate through. I even have breadcrumbs. I can't really see these at the top. I'm sure you guys can. I have a Zoom conference. A uh, little drop down that's kind of blocking my top screen, but there's breadcrumbs I can get to. So if I need to, you know, navigate back a few steps in my folders, I can get to there very easily. Um, you know, similar to that, I can keep adding metadata. If I want to add metadata to photos, I can simply go over here, add keywords. This is actually a feature that I use quite a bit on our import feature. Um, and I'll show you guys that real fast here, but I'm not going to import any photos, obviously. Uh, but our import feature doesn't actually import anything into Photo Raw. It's more of a download to your computer or copy off your memory card to your computer, set it into whatever location that you want to set it in, a new folder, an existing folder. You can rename the file and you can add metadata. Uh, so I actually, every time I go out on a shoot, I come back and I just immediately plug in my card and open up this import option because I can add all that metadata that I want to add right as I pull my photos off of my camera. So if, you know, if I want to add Japanese gardens, for example, to this, I can just come here to add keywords and type in Japanese, I could type today, Japanese gardens. And every photo that's imported will get that keyword added to that. Then when I go into my filters in the browse module, I can just search Japanese gardens and find all of my folders, or sorry, photos in here that I've imported from my camera. Um, similar to an iPhone, um, any mobile phone really, just plug it in. I use this a lot for that as well. And again, it's not actually importing anything into Photo Raw. This is just a browser. None of these photos have been imported. They are just on my machine, either via uh, Dropbox cloud storage or a connected external hard drive. Um, so yeah, that's the basics of the browse module. Um, Ryan, are there any questions on anything out there? Uh, the only question we had here was with a uh, custom sort, like if you wanted to put your own images into different groups, uh, like move them around and have that main view. Yeah, definitely. So you can easily just by right clicking, you can add a new folder um, or add a subfolder. I actually do it uh, by choosing the images I want to add to that folder. So I'll just choose these two images and I will right click and I can add a subfolder and I'll just say that these are my ocean wave whoops sorry about that my ocean wave shots and i can move those selected items into the subfolder or i can just copy and make a copy of those items into that subfolder um, and basically anything that happens here in photo raw is going to happen on your machine as well so you can see in this folder structure here i've added that ocean wave now there's a folder here that is going to appear in my finder window that says ocean wave under Oregon coast vacation, you know, and I can keep doing that too. I can, I actually do this quite a bit with my shoots. I, you know, I'll pull in all of the photos from one session and then I'll just kind of whittle them down by adding them to subfolders first. Um, I'll maybe make this one Lily here and just add that. So as you can see, it might take a second for it to load. There we go. Lily pops in right to there. 
Um, so sorting now, I mean, that's just adding subfolders, but sorting down here at the bottom, you can sort by ascending, you can sort by the file type, the file size, um, any of your color labels or ratings that you've added, as I was showing you with the filters area, the sort works similar. Um, does that kind of answer the question, Ryan? Uh, yeah, I think that did it, Mel. All right, awesome. So uh, just if anyone's new here with us, there is a Q&A panel. Ryan is looking at and answering questions for me here while I give you guys this uh, tour of Photo Raw. So if you do have any questions or need me to slow it down or show you something again, just let me know. We're gonna start to dive into some of the actual editing now with the tools. Um, so yeah, if you have questions, throw them in there and Ryan will get those up to me. And I'll just go ahead and get started here in develop. So the develop module is our raw processor. It's a non-destructive raw processor, and this is what's gonna make your photos look great. This is where you are going to edit your basic raw adjustments, uh, like your exposure, your contrast, your uh, highlight detail. Uh, you can bring back any of your mid-tone and shadow detail. And if I hope you guys can see how fast and how responsive this is on the screen share, but you know, as I move these sliders, I can actually see exactly what it's affecting, how it's affecting my image. I can even see up here, if you guys like using the histogram, um, you can see how that's affecting your histogram as well. Um, so I really don't like to use that sometimes, it kind of throws me off, so I'll just keep it up here in this navigator view. Um, so, the way you want to use develop is you just want to go straight down the list. This is where you're going to correct your photo um, to get it back to how you remember it from when you shot it. So I'm just going to start diving in here and I might bring that down to recover some of the highlights there. And actually by hitting the J key on your keyboard, you can see where your white point and your black point is. See that red that's coming up? That's where the highlights are blown out. There's no detail. Again, that's just hitting the J key on your keyboard. I usually hit that every single time I'm in uh, the develop module, just you know, looking for a black point. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a quick little edit there to make the sky come out a little more and make this foreground come out just a little bit more. And so, yeah, as I, as I move these sliders, you know, it's, it's affecting the photo. This is a raw photo. Everything I'm adjusting is showing instantly on the screen. Um, I can even adjust the white balance. Um, so if your white balance wasn't set properly when you shot the photo, you can come in here and adjust it further. I usually like to use this dropper tool right here to find a white balance or find a, a white point rather to choose. So I'll just set that and then I might adjust it from there just to make it a little warmer. And we also have a uh, tint correction, temperature correction, saturation and vibrance. Um, more importantly though, we have details and lens correction. Uh, lens corrections are automatically applied and will automatically pick up on the uh, lens. Um, that's connected, whether Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, it should pick up on that lens. There are a ton of lenses in here, as you can see. Hopefully that pop-up is appearing for you guys. Um, this is automatically turned on, but you can obviously turn it off if, oops, sorry about that, you can turn it off if you don't want that. And this will correct for any uh, peripheral distortion or fall off, any chromatic aberrations that might appear, uh, or any fringing of the colors. Um, so I usually leave that on. Uh, details is how you're gonna do your sharpening and noise reduction. There's really not much to do with this photo on that, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that pane. I'm just gonna get this to a somewhat decent state for editing so that we can move on to some of the other tools in here. Um, and what's great about this, when I do actually have my photos colors adjusted, the brightness adjusted, I can come back to my film strip view and I can sync these adjustments across different photos. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do that here. I can just choose the photo I wanna sync, choose the sync option and my super selected options now, or super selected photos settings now should appear on this photo. And if you remember before, it's what it looked like before. Here's what it looks like after. Those are the same exact settings that I just applied um, to the last photo, but now it's on this photo right here. 
Um, so I'm actually gonna I'm gonna work on this photo a little bit because I kind of like it a little better, and I'll show you guys how some of those extra tools work for brushing and retouching. Um, so Tab key will actually get rid of the side presets and the side navigation. So if you hit the tab key, it'll give you a more full screen view of your image. And over here on the left, I have my different tools, uh, my tools for cropping and leveling, um, masking tools, a gradient mask, a brush, and then also my retouching tools, my perfect eraser, my retouch brush, and a clone stamp tool. So the first thing that jumps out at me in this photo is these dust spots on my lens up here in the sky that I think I want to fix. So I'm going to choose my retouch brush first, and I'm going to bring that over to this spot up here, and I'm just going to brush away that little dust spot. This is going to be just like a smudge tool, a retouch brush like Lightroom, uh, similar. So I'm just going to brush that over those dust spots. It's going to do a great job of that. That's how that works. This is great for um, retouching portraits. It's great for just getting rid of blemishes, crow's feet, um, you know, it, it's just basic smudging, retouching stuff. If you actually have things you want to remove from the photo, that would be the perfect eraser. And in this case, I'm going to use the perfect eraser to get rid of this puddle right here because it's kind of distracting from my ocean. I like these ones up front, but I don't really like where it is up here. So this perfect eraser is going to act like a content aware tool. And all I need to do is brush over what I want to erase. And it's going to fill that in with similar uh, like pixels, similar to a content aware tool. And you'll never knew that it was there before. Um, you can clean that up a little bit more if you need to. And then if you need to step back, you can easily just do a control Z to get back to the state right before. So I'm going to leave that like that. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. The eraser tool is great for power lines for, uh, I've used it for birds in the sky or people on a beach, even just, you know, cleaning up the photo, getting rid of things that are unnecessary and don't need to be there. That'd be the eraser tool. The clone stamp tool I won't spend any time on today. That is just a similar clone stamp tool to what you have in Photoshop. Um, but I am going to jump into the crop tool a little bit here. The crop tool is also going to be where you, let me actually bring this down so I can see my level tool here. Sorry about that. There's a Zoom conference that uh, drop down that's blocking my top toolbar. Uh, in the crop tool though, this is where you can level your photo. Uh, we actually do have some new tools coming for the transform uh, feature crop tool soon. So stay tuned for that. That was not a very good line I just drew. But this level tool, if you just draw a straight line, it will level your photo. I usually find a spot on the photo like the horizon line. If I could <laughs> click it very well, that will level my photo. Um, and from here, I might actually crop this a little more up from the bottom. And you can also change your crop too. If you have some, um, you know, preset sizes that you're looking at, you can make your own presets, um, et cetera. So I think I'm have, there we go. So the free form, let's just go ahead and crop it to about right there. And I'm going to put my tab key to bring up this again. And I'm going to boost my shadows and midtones a little more because I want to use the gradient masking tool to show you what that does. Um, the gradient masking tool right here is going to add a flare mask. And you can change what exactly this adjustment layer is doing under local adjustments. So I just hit this uh, local adjustment gradient mask over here. It opens up my local adjustment pane which that is different than the overall settings. These local adjustments will allow me to get more refined with my image. So as you can see, with my gradient mask selected here, and I have this, I have this boosted or darkened quite a bit so that you can actually see what's happening, but I can adjust this so that it's perfect to you know, my horizon line. And this will allow me to just add some more refinements to localized spots in my photo, you know, and in this case, I want to maybe darken this sky just a little bit and maybe just add a little bit of warmth to it and maybe just a tiny little touch of saturation. 
Uh, so you can see a preview. Here's our before. It's a little crooked. Here's our after. I mean, it's not going to win any awards, but it went a long way in just a short amount of time. Uh, so that's the develop module. Ryan, are there any questions on anything in develop? I think you touched on them most, so I think we're good. All right, awesome. Um, and then I just actually realized one last thing. Uh, this isn't the greatest image to show on, but there's also the adjustment brush here as well. So just like the local adjustments gradient, um, if you, know, you wanna actually brush in what you were doing with this local adjustment, you can do so just by choosing the brush tool and just by brushing that in. And the reverse of that is up here, I can change my mode from paint in to paint out and if I need to actually paint it out, like on the ocean or just on this, this mountain, or actually that's an island, I believe. <laughs> this is Hawaii. Um, so yeah, you can just brush out that same effect. And you can actually see my mask right over here and how that's, uh, that is appearing on the photo. Um, if, I'm not gonna show this much today, but there are more advanced masking options. Um, so if any of you work with luminosity masks, this would be where you find them in the develop module and in the effects module, just by clicking this mask up here, you can further refine, adjust, do any luminosity masking, uh, et cetera, all right there. Um, and further to that, I can keep adding as many layers as I want. If I want to maybe add a layer that's just a, uh, just a vibrance layer, for example, I could do that and I'll just add a quick little Oops, layer there so you can actually see something happening. It's not a very good one, so let's go ahead and just delete that layer. Go back to where we started. So that's the develop module. I'm gonna move on now into our effects module um, here in just a second so we can get a little more creative with how our edits are going uh, rather than just fixing stuff. So I'm gonna bump back over to browse right now and you know, before I actually go into, um, into the effects module, I think it's a good time to show off the HDR and the panoramic module. Um, the HDR, if any of you guys are shooting HDR out there, this module basically is going to merge your different exposure brackets together. All you have to do is select the three photos that you want or however many photos you want to merge together. Choose the HDR module over here in the right and it's going to be very, very fast. We're actually one of the fastest um, HDR merging softwares on the market. Um, it's gonna merge your three photos together. You can actually choose which exposure you know, you'd like to go for and you can further adjust that uh, through there. Um, also, sorry, this is basically exactly what you're seeing in the develop module. It's giving you all your midtones and shadows, your white points, your black point to adjust. Your J key also is going to work to show you where your highlights and your black point are being blown out and are true black. Um, so that's the basics of the HDR module. You can also kind of change the look and make it a little more glowy or a little more surreal um, as well. So uh, any questions on the HDR module, feel free to send me an email. Um, I'll send out my email at the end of this, uh, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. It's very straightforward. And same thing with the panoramic module. Let me just go ahead and find a couple pano photos. So this is the same idea. It's going to merge your photos together, panoramas. Um, it's not limited to just being a straight line. If you're doing astro photo and have a big matrix of photos or just any panorama and you have a matrix of photos, it's going to combine those all together uh, very fast. It's you know, just gonna stitch them uh, for you. Um, yeah, so that's the panel module. It's like I said, it's very straightforward. You just choose the photos you want to merge together, click on the panel option and it'll pull up the stitched image together. <laughs> um, so I will let that finish here and I will jump over into the effects module now because I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering about the effects module. Um, cancel out of here. And I'll come back to browse. Let's see, where do we want to start here? I think I want to go with a portrait. I prefer, I, I shoot portraits mostly myself. So let me find one here. Let's go ahead and edit this one. So I'm going to choose this photo and I'm going to come into the effects module. 
Now you see here over on the left side a couple things. You see our tool well from develop actually has some different tools in there, some more tools. Um, these are going to be just more refined masking tools for you to use in the effects module. Uh, but you also can see here that there's presets and there is filters. Um, so our filters are going to, oops, give me one second. My light just shut off on me in here. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So the filters and presets are usually um, where I start in this effects module rather than over here. Personally, I start in presets because presets are going to add a stack of filters together um, that have been adjusted already. You can save your presets as your own um, as you go along. They're great for starting points um, or to at least get you kind of motivated in a direction. Um, and we also give away a lot of presets for free as loyalty rewards. Um, every month you'll see presets coming through or textures or maybe even LUTs. Um, we give those away free to all of our customers. You can actually go find some right now at onone.com slash loyalty, L-O-Y-A-L-T-Y. -Y. Uh, I'll see if Ryan can throw a link in there for you guys. But there's tons of presets you can get started with and install for free into effects. Um, and this is how I usually start. I choose a preset that's been, a, that's been created or that I created, um, you know, and just I, I kind of get myself going in a direction. Um, and then using our quick view browser up here, when I'm actually in a preset category, I can see what preset is going to look on my image or at least get an idea of, you know, what preset in the faded and matte section looks good on uh, this image here of Michaela. And I think I'm going to go this route here. Um, so yeah, I just added a quick preset there and you can see over here in the overall settings what it's actually applying to my image here. And let me change my mode real fast to um, solo mode. I can't find that. There you go. Solo mode. All right. So solo mode is just going to collapse these uh, these filters here so that I can edit these easier. Without solo mode on, these are all open at once. I prefer them closed. It's just a little more organized. You can find that under the window menu at the top, solo mode in the effects module. Just a little tip there. Um, so I've chosen my preset. I can see all the filters that is added to that preset or to this image from that preset. And I can further go in and refine each one of these if I want to uh, you know, change the, the vignette that's added or maybe I want to reduce this sunshine filter and make it a little more cool. Uh, you have complete flexibility of adjusting each one of these um, filters here. And I'll just go ahead and turn them all off so you can see what each one of these does. Our tone enhancer, a split toner, a vignette, a sunshine, all given to me right from that preset that I added. But I know that there's a little more that I want to do to this photo. You know, I might want to add a little bit of dynamic contrast to make her, uh, her shirt pop a little more. Um, you know, I might want to brighten up her eyes, for example. So getting me at least started in the right direction is a great way to go. Um, and I actually might take off this vignette. I don't really like what that's doing at the moment. And I'm going to go ahead and get started here with a new filter, um, the dynamic contrast filter. And I'll turn that off and on so you can actually see how awesome this filter is just by itself. Um, but there's some refinements that we want to make to this. And the first thing being we want to brush or mask off this filter over the background and her face. You know, we don't want that much contrast uh, and detail to appear. You know, it kind of looks fake when it's all over like that. So let's go back to our fit view and let's choose our brush tool here, the masking brush. And I'm gonna make sure I'm set to paint out rather than paint in because this filter is already applied to the image um, so we want to paint it out, obviously. So I'm going to just brush here very quickly around the edge and I'm going to show you what my masking view looks like so you can see, you know, anything that's black is being concealed and white is being revealed. So everything that's white is where dynamic contrast is being affected. Everything that's black, it's not being affected. So 
how are we going to mask around her hair here? So the way that I usually go about this is I start with the perfect brush tool, which is right at the top, right up here. Just choose your perfect brush. And I might adjust this feather just a little bit there. And your bracket keys on your keyboard will be what adjusts the um, size of the brush. Or you can go up here, but most of us are going to prefer the bracket keys, I'm sure. So as I brush now with my perfect brush selected, all I need to do is keep that minus sign in the background or in the area that I, or the color tones that I don't want this to brush over. And it's going to do a great job of keeping my foreground intact and keeping my subject intact. I'll show you again that mask view so you can see I'm just brushing very easily. I have my perfect brush selected, so I don't need to, I don't need to be perfect with this. It's being perfect for me already. Just come brush that out. And like I said, all you need to do is just keep that minus sign in similar color background. Maybe go slow as we get towards her shoulders there. And so yeah, landscape shooters, if uh, you have mountains that you want to do a sky replacement on, um, you know, this is great for doing that as well. This is in the layers module also. I'm in effects here right now, um, and I'm not going to spend too much time refining that in the sake of time. And let me actually paint it off her face here so that you can see. But the way that I would probably do this is actually in reverse. So, you know, rather than applying this filter as a whole to the image and then brushing it off, I have the flexibility of doing it in the exact opposite. So I'm gonna reset this back to the original state, the dynamic contrast filter, and I just hit reset right at the top here. And so here is off, here is on. And what I'm gonna do is actually invert this filter so that it's now black, concealed, not appearing. And as you can see, when it's white, it's appearing. Inverting that, well now I can actually brush this in rather than brush it out. So you have flexibility to do pretty much whatever you want. Um, and we don't want this to really kind of appear anywhere but her, her hair and maybe her, uh, her clothes here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slowly brush that in there. And as you can see, I'm not being very, very smooth with it there, but um, using a mouse rather than a, a tablet. So it's a little difficult for me versus what I usually use, but the idea is you can just brush this in exactly where you want it. You can keep adjusting that opacity. Maybe it's not something you want to do at uh, you know full 100%. Maybe it's something you just want to do a little bit. Um, so that's just quickly editing a um, one of the filters. And just like in the develop module, we also have local adjustments. So if we want to jump in and do some portrait retouching here, or maybe some dodging and burning you know, the local adjustments is really our go-to, no matter what module you're in, develop or effects. I use the local adjustments quite a bit. Uh, excuse me. Um, so I'm gonna choose local adjustments here and I just wanna kind of touch up her face a little bit in terms of her eyes and make them pop out a little bit more. So I'm gonna choose my adjustment, my local adjustment, add a layer, and I'm gonna make sure my brush is selected rather than my gradient. Make sure I'm set to paint in. I might adjust this brush size in just a second, but the first thing I'm gonna do is go to this More tab under my Adjustment layer, and I'm gonna choose the Magic Eye Fixer. And what this Magic Eye Fixer is doing is it's adding a lighten and a, um, a detail layer at the same time. And let me go ahead and adjust this feather so it's applying at pretty much 100%. And I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit there so you can see what's actually happening. And now this is going to look quite fake because we're at 100% opacity. You know, I can even choose my perfect brush if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because her eye colors would, you know, cause a little bit of a problem there. But what I can do now is tone that back, you know, and just not, not something crazy, but something that's just a nice little subtle pop in her eyes. So hopefully you guys can see how uh, different that makes her look in the photo. 
Um, but this is what I like to do. I like to just keep going through these adjustment layers and just tweaking it. Um, you know, maybe add like a vibrance, just a tad bit to her lips there, just to make them boost. And I'm gonna, again, tone this back so it's not 100%. And do something like right about there. And so then here's our fit. And then our preview, there's our before, there's our after. So, I mean, that took me maybe eight to 10 minutes. It could have been faster, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the basics of the effects module. You can jump back and forth between overall settings, between local adjustments. Uh, you can keep adding these local adjustments if you want to. I can even rename these local adjustments. Um, so if I want to remember this is my eyes, you know, I want to remember that this one was my uh, lips that I boosted the vibrance, I can easily change that. This is all non-destructive, so if I were to close out of this and go edit a different photo, I could come back and everything would be sitting here exactly as I left it. Um, and I can even keep adding to this. You know, if I just bounce back and forth, add another filter, I might actually add that vignette now to give it that finishing touch. Let's choose the big softy one. Um, and another little tip, when you are using the vignette, there's this little handy dandy Tool down here, you can actually set the light point. So I like to set it about right there. And so I'll show you again. Here's our before of Michaela. Here is our after. That didn't take me very long to do. If I want to save that as a preset, I can just come up. Oops, sorry, here we go into settings and I can save settings as a preset. We can just go ahead and name that Michaela matted and we can choose a preset category or I can make a new preset category if I want to. I'll go ahead and add that to faded and matte. You know, if I have some more images where she's wearing the same outfit and the same style, I might want to add the same look to those photos. So adding a preset, saving a preset, great way to you know, get the same look across all your images, similar to how we did sync settings and develop. I could just sync settings as well um, in our browse module with uh, with this image and a bunch of other ones, but if you want to save it as a preset and come back to it uh, That's a great way to do that uh, Ryan, are there any questions on anything? Uh, right now, I don't see any burning questions. So uh, feel free to keep going All right. Awesome. Um, so as I mentioned anyone if you do have questions Ryan is in the uh, Q&A module there answering <laughs> questions and passing them up to me so if you have any burning questions, throw them in there. If you need me to show something over again, throw it in there. Not a problem for me at all. Um, but let's actually jump into the layers module now. Um, let me find, I think there is a really cool, yeah. So we'll do this one. I think that might work. No, actually, let's not do this one. Let's go ahead and do Omar because compositing, I mean, you guys understand. I'll do a sky swap in just a second. But what we're going to do here is create a composite of the snowboarder up from Mount Hood. Um, so I'm just going to choose my four images that I want to create a composite out of. Maybe it's a sky I want to replace that sky with. I can add that later if I want to. So choose your images that you want to throw into layers. Just choose one. Choose add as a layer. So layers is going to be where, I mean, anyone who uses Photoshop, this is going to be where you do your sky swaps, uh, your background replacements, your, your changing of heads, much more. Um, I'll show you how to just quickly just do this composite of Omar. Um, and I think that the Zoom software is kind of slowing down <laughs> Photo Raw, so sorry about the delay here. Um, but so yeah, the layers module, this is going to be where you do any compositing. Um, a lot of fine art people are gonna be in here quite a bit, just adding textures, uh, masking. You can actually see over here, I have some extras that I've installed and that come pre-installed. Um, so if you did wanna do a sky swap, I believe there's a couple uh, pre-built skies in there that you can choose from. Yeah, so any masking that you wanna do, Sky swaps right in here. We have some built-in skies for you that are great to choose from. 
Uh, you can add your own. These are just JPEGs. There's instructions on our knowledge base for how to add your own extras and add your own uh, backgrounds, textures, whatever it may be to Photo Raw. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get started here. Um, I won't spend too much time on the theory behind layers here, but this is our layer stack. The topmost layer here is the one that's showing. And as I turn that off, you can see the layers that are appearing underneath it. Um, you know, and so the, the goal here obviously is to create a composite of all of these images here. So um, there's a couple ways you could go about it. And the main idea is you'll just be masking away layer by layer. Um, so I'll start off here. And this one, I think we actually want to start with this one on the top, the one where he's the farthest. And as you can see, I can quickly move those those layers very easily just by clicking and dragging them. Um, there's also tools there for merging and duplicating layers or adding a color fill layer. Um, I actually use that color fill layer quite a bit too and just change the blending mode. I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, but let's get started on this one of Omar. So basically the idea of layers is each one of these layers, these photos is just stacked on top of each other. We need to cut out part of this photo or paint out part of this photo to get the layers underneath to appear. So using my masking brush right here, I'll make sure I'm set to paint out. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the perfect brush or anything right now because it, it's pretty straightforward what we're doing. The background's going to be the same. I'm going to go ahead and brush there. And remember, I'm on this top layer here. So I actually need to keep brushing over to the left to get not only this layer underneath to appear, but also this layer. And as you can see, I mean, that's, he's way over here. So choosing this top layer, I'm just going to keep painting out over to the side. And you might say to yourself, well, nothing's happening. Well, that's because we haven't actually painted out on the layer below that. So I'm going to choose this layer now, make sure I'm selected on this layer. And you can see the mask job there that I just did. So now I'm going to choose this layer. Again, my brush is selected. I haven't had to change tools or anything or, you know, go back to the left and then go back to the right. I can just simply choose the layer that I want to mask and mask it away and do a cutout. And I'm not going to refine this, this too much here, but, uh, yeah, so as I, as I go through this, I mean, think, think of if you have any questions on layers, um, ask them of Ryan. This is a very, very straightforward edit here. Um, just created a quick composite of those images just by stacking them in layers and just brushing them away with our brush tool here. Um, there's also a gradient mask just like we used previously uh, where you know, if you just start masking in the sky, for example, um, you can throw that gradient mask on there and it'll take away the layer in the sky. Um, I'll show you guys that in just a moment here. Let's add a color fill layer just so you can see what this does. So a color fill layer is, I mean, it's just a layer that's color. You know, you can adjust the opacity of that layer however you want. Um, so let's, let's maybe add something that's a little more on the start out here. Now maybe we'll make it a little warmer actually. Go this route. Come here. So this looks kind of weird now, yes, but we'll get there. <laughs> so I'll tone this opacity up to 50 and I'll adjust this blending mode so you can see how you get a real time preview of our blending modes. And I, I hope this pop up that I'm going through is actually appearing on the screen um, so that you can see these are just blending modes that I'm adding. I might choose screen here actually and tone this down a little bit more just to give it kind of a vintage style look to it almost. I mean, obviously it's not that great, but the idea is, yeah, you can just keep adding and you can keep stacking different layers on top of each other to create, you know, a fine art composite, create any compositing, any head swapping, um, I can actually do a quick head swap for you guys, but it's the same idea here with sky swaps, with composites. You have all of your different tools for masking, your perfect eraser, your retouch brush. 
you have some refinement tools for, you know, if there's a couple uh, little jaggies or pixels left at the edge of a mountaintop, this, this uh, chisel tool actually right here is great for just doing like it says, chiseling away your mask on the edge. Um, I think I actually do have an example I can show you guys of that. So let me jump back over into our browse module. Um, Ryan, are there any questions while I'm looking for this photo? Uh, not so far, no. People seem to be enjoying the, uh, the tutorial again, they're giving them here. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I don't think I have the photo that I wanted to use necessarily, unfortunately, for this. Oops, I think I might have hit a button I shouldn't hit on my keyboard. Sorry about that. Give it one second here. So yeah, the, uh, the layers module, um, I really don't have too much more to say on the layers module. I think if you guys do have questions, again, add that in there. Um, I don't think I have the photo that I'm wanting to show though, unfortunately here. So maybe we can make something out of nothing. Let's go ahead and just try these two. Let's see what we can do. So I'll add these two to layers or to layer, add as a layer. Do, do, do. And again, all this is non-destructive. So I mean, go crazy on your photos. You'll never lose your original photo. Uh, not until you actually export something will you actually have a saved image. I'll show you that in just a second here. Um, this won't be the best example, unfortunately. Um, let me come back to layers with this guy. Add as a layer. All right, so I'm going a little off, uh, off the beaten path here with the demo, but I think this might work out. And this will show you guys a sky swap, um, and the basics at least of using that gradient mask for doing a sky swap. Um, and I apologize for the delay on things. The Zoom broadcast conference really kind of slows down things a little bit. Um, so here's our different layers. Um, let's, let's go ahead and just kind of adjust these first. And I think what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna add this, this rock into the image below it and then bring the sky in from the image behind it. Um, and so this will be a great kind of way for you guys to see just how you can kind of freestyle, I guess, in Photo Raw. So right now what I'm doing, I'm just masking away the parts of this image from the rock. That's my top layer over here on the right. Um, I'm gonna choose my perfect brush here in just a second. And I'm just gonna get close to the edge of this rock. I'm not gonna spend too much time. That's actually working really well. So, yeah, okay, yeah, I thought that might be a little bit of a problem because of the ocean there. Um, so remember, Perfect Brush works on colors. So obviously there's a lot of different colors there in the ocean. So I'll just, I might just keep that ocean as is and see if we can maybe do a blend. Um, a blend of the ocean on the horizon line a little better. So perfect brush, I have that selected. You can see it's, it's doing a great job of keeping the edge of my rock intact. Uh, I'm gonna turn that off and I'm going to get as close as I can down here at the bottom. That I kind of messed up a little bit. And actually this will be a great time to show you what happens if you do mess up and do something like that. You can just simply go back to paint in and paint in that layer, the same one that we just messed up. So I'm gonna leave the bottom there. Whoops, I kind of brought my sky back. I don't want that to happen. Get that out. All right, so the rock is here in the middle, but I think I wanna move it to the side. So I'm gonna choose my move tool here in the top left. And this will allow me to adjust the size. I'm gonna choose the shift key and drag on the corner here. You can see a little bit of our sky got left there on the top corner. I'll get that out in just a second. Maybe we'll move that to something like, well, let me get that sky out first. 
Oh, sorry, that was just bothering me. <laughs> um, all right, so let's adjust this a little more. And let's go maybe like there's just a little bit there. So let's let this level. All right, so there is our rock, and there is our mill layer in the foreground and here is our background layer that we want to bring in uh, the sky at the very least so the first thing i want to do is probably bring this horizon line of the sky level with this horizon line and to do that i'm going to make sure i'm selected on this layer and i'm going to tone back this opacity so i can actually see the layer underneath you can see that layer comes through and then I'm going to select my bottom layer and make sure my move tool is selected. And I'm just going to bring, bring this up and probably go just below the mountain so that the, uh, the cloud perspective isn't, you know, really crazy looking. Um, so move that bottom layer up to there. Let's go ahead and bring back our opacity on this middle layer. And I'm going to turn on this as well so that we can see. You know, I'm actually gonna merge these layers together first so that when I do my perfect brush, it's going to uh, see, see this rock. See, now this rock is part of my image now. So, on that back again, there is our sky we want to bring in. So now I'm selected on this top layer. I'm going to choose my perfect brush or my brush tool first. And I'm going to turn off the perfect brush. And, or actually, sorry, let's do the gradient mask. That's right. I'm going to choose the masking bug here this time. And as you can see, might need to just refine it a little bit there, but everything that's on the top is what's being cut out from the layer that I'm on. See how it's black up there? So, I mean, as I move that down, you can see everything that's on the top of this gradient mask is being concealed. It's just like my rock that I added, just like, um, you know, wherever I move this, anything under this line is going to be concealed. Here's the feather to the new background. So I might move that just to about there. And as you can see, I need to fix this now. And I use this tool on purpose because it's, it's easy to keep the horizon line straight and do a nice fade and feather together versus using the brush tool, uh, you know, to have to brush and make it look pretty uh, along your horizon line. So landscape photographers out there, if you're doing sky swaps, uh, Definitely layers with uh, the gradient tool is one of my go-tos. Um, so let's get this rock back though. Let's choose our masking brush and let's make sure we're set to paint in. And we'll make sure we are on the perfect brush now. And I'm just going to paint that in. You can see it's kind of showing that background layer a little bit. That'll go away once we're done, uh, done painting in. I thought it would. There we go. All right, so like I said, kind of <laughs> we went off the beaten path a little bit there, but now we have an image we can further refine and go into effects with. Um, I think I will actually just, I'm gonna just merge these together. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. You guys understand what just happened there with the composite, so I won't take this into effects or anything like that. I'm actually, getting close on time and I know a lot of you guys have busy schedules today. So let me touch on just a few more things here. Um, we also have a resize module. If any of you have been with us for a while, you probably remember this as genuine fractals. Uh, this resize module is the most powerful in the industry for doing enlargements, um, for enlarging your photo without um, having pixelation without losing any detail when you do that enlargement. Um, we also have a gallery wrap feature built in. Let me just jump in here for you guys so I can show you it. Um, so yeah, resize, it's, it's very, very easy to use. Uh, this is kind of your last step before printing 
and resizing the photo. Um, if you are, if you're just publishing to Facebook or to the web, you don't need to go through resize. Uh, you can obviously, but our export option will also give you photo resizing options as well. This resize is going to be more for those of you doing prints who need to add a little bit of extra, you know, sharpening, who need to maybe add a gallery wrap for doing canvas prints. We have a really cool gallery wrap feature built in that will, um, I'll show you that on another image in just a moment here. But the idea with resize is it's not going to pixelate your image at all. You can go up to a thousand percent from the original image size without losing any detail in the photo. And I actually have a preset made here real fast that I will just go ahead and click. Sorry about that, my light turned off again. Uh, so you can't really tell anything has happened on your side, but if I zoom in and look, I mean, you can tell that all my pixelation or all my uh, detail is still there and nothing has been pixelated. I mean, let's just see what percentage we boosted this 225% of the original size with that preset. Um, and we're not losing any detail, any quality in our image when we go to print that. Uh, there's also a tiling feature. So if uh, any of you print on multiple, multiple papers, tiling is a great option for that. Um, and let me show you the gallery wrap real fast. This isn't the greatest example for a gallery wrap because this one will show you actually what's happening. Um, so gallery wrap, this is actually one I use every single time I do a canvas print. Gallery wrap is going to add the margins for you and it's not going to crop your image at all to do so. I know that can be kind of a, a pain when you go to like a photo lab and you get your image back and part of it's you know kind of cropped. So this gallery wrap feature, when you turn it on, you can keep your frame of your photo and it's going to reflect and mirror and do all of this you know, work that you'd have to do in Photoshop for you automatically. So let me turn that off again so you can see, here's our photo, really, really take note of the bottom of her dress, the edge of this pillar uh, or edge of the house, whatever it is. Turn on the gallery wrap feature. You can change the thickness of your margins. Um, you can change if you want that to be, you know, like more of a blurred type of a look um, or even just a stretched type of a look. I'll show you stretch right now. Um, but yeah, the, the main idea behind this gallery wrap is it's not losing or cropping your image at all. It's just another trick, another tool to make your images look great, especially when you're doing a canvas wrap. Uh, so that's the basis of resize. And now that we've done all of this, how are we going to save our photos? This is all non-destructive. So everything I've done, I can just reset my photos and it'll go back to the original state. You know, there's, I haven't saved anything and I can jump back into develop if I wanted to, and I can open, open up this image and develop and I can go back in and keep editing this image if I want to. I mean, I don't, don't really want to, but I can, I have that flexibility. Nothing has actually been saved here. Nothing has been imported into Photo Raw, if you remember from the beginning. These photos just live on my machine, just like this. So when you are ready to save, you know, when, you're, when you have a fully baked version that you're ready to put on Facebook or your website or Instagram, whatever it may be, this is where you're gonna wanna use the export module. Um, so just come, Let's actually choose a different photo. Ah, this will work. So we'll go to file. We'll choose export. Works on as many photos as you want to export at once. You can change the photo size, as I mentioned, right here in export. You can add your watermark if you want to. Um, right in export, you can adjust that size. You can adjust the location of where that is. You can even change the inset off the edge and the opacity, of course. You'll want to change that too. Um, but export is going to give you all of these same style adjustments that resize does, um, does, and it's also going to allow you to change the name, the file type. You know, if this was a PSD file, for example, and we wanted to compress it into a JPEG, all we would do is come in and export, choose JPEG, choose our color space we're using. Uh, it's probably going to be automatically set as this one is, and you can rename it. Um, I use the rename quite a bit, you know, just let me click the show option there. There we go. Um, you have, you have serialization you can add, you can add the current name or uh, sorry, more text to the current name. You can add the date. 
a custom date if you want. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of flexibility with this export module and one or this export drawer. And once you export, that's essentially saving your photo. Um, but again, your original is going to be there. It's going to be non-destructed and it's going to be intact. Whether you export or not, I mean, the export is just going to make a new version in a JPEG and this is still going to be in our CR2 form. Um, you know, I, I, again, haven't imported anything here. It's super fast and easy. Um, don't be overwhelmed by the left side where you can browse through all the different folders. That's just a browser. Uh, presets, again, just to kind of recap, presets are a great way to start. Um, some people use them as finishing touches, but there are free presets on our website, on one.com slash loyalty. Um, and yeah, Ryan, are there any questions? We are pretty much done here. So if anyone has any questions on anything, now is the time. Uh, nothing yet. I'll keep an eye out, but so far so good. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that's pretty much all I have for everyone here today. So if uh, you do have any further questions or you want to get in touch with me directly, you can email me jmm, J. Michael Morelli, jmm at on1.com. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email. I am recording this webinar, so it will be posted up on our YouTube channel and up on our blog, hopefully by this afternoon. Um, but otherwise, thank you for being here with me today. I know it was a kind of a long guided tour there, but hopefully this helped you guys out in the helped you find what you were looking for, how to do certain things in Photo Raw. We do have other webinars coming up in the future as well, on one.com slash webinars. You can join myself or Dylan. Uh, we usually have a webinar or two per week. Some of them are a little more top level guided tour like this. Some of them are a little more focused on you know, portrait photography or landscape photography, maybe a certain module. So check out the on1.com website slash webinars or slash blog. Also in the welcome screen that opens up when you open up the app or just under help, welcome to On One Photo Raw. You can uh, go to our website right from there. You can find training videos, you can find webinars to sign up for right from within inside of the app. So if you're opened in Photo Raw right now, just go up to the help menu, choose welcome to On One Photo Raw navigate through that page a little bit. You'll find webinars to sign up for, videos to watch, and a lot of other great information. Um, so I'll ask one last time, Ryan, is there any questions before I close this down? Uh, nope, nothing's coming in, so I think we're all set. All right, awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone, for joining me here today, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.